Well, folks, France. Final game of the warm-ups, and they give the Wallabies a wee bit of a hiding. 41 points to 17. We'll go through some key events and stats from the match from the start to France, and uh, then we wait. We wait for the Rugby World Cup. Um, great crowd in France, if that crowd and the recent crowds in France is any indication of what we're going to get in this Rugby World Cup. I think we're in for a bit of a treat. Really loud, boisterous, and um, great atmosphere at the game. One last game for the warm-ups behind their side, although it didn't start that great. DuPont offside early meant the Wallabies had a first chance to get themselves on the board. But Carter Gordon, uh, at the moment anyway, is not the world's most reliable goal kicker. He missed a fair few points. He misses an early penalty. And then, with those missed points, uh, the Wallabies... Can see the couple. Rob Beltini gives away one for a clean out on Dante. Tupo gives away one for an early tackle on Villiers. And that pretty much leads directly to the French first try of the game. From a line out, the French with a bit of deceptive play, which I like seeing. The teams that vary it up, they decide not to maul it. Um, Dupont just kind of draws a man half into a tackle, pops the ball to Dante. And Dante has got eyes straight for Carter Gordon. He's a young, kind of inexperienced 10-man, and Dante is a big human being. Why wouldn't you? Bumfa, he goes over, and it's seven points to nil to France. After less than 10 minutes, the crowd is loving every second of that. Dante flattened Nawani Tawase not too long later, although it was kind of an obstruction move. Uh, so he gave away a penalty not long after scoring the try, which gave the Wallabies a chance, and interestingly, this time... The Wallabies hit back pretty nicely. And now when he's a wise, he looks great at international level. He just, he looks better than he does at Super Rugby level. He's one of those weird players that just, when he puts on his international jersey, just, I don't know, like skips up a couple of extra levels. I don't know how he does it, but man, he's looking good. He's going to be a key part of any success that the Wallabies have, I think, at this World Cup, if uh, if they are going to have any. Um, yeah, from that obstruction penalty, it's a line out, it's a maul. Advantage to the Wallabies, they go for touch, they get advantage again. This time they spin it wide and um, Callaway's final pass to uh, to Nawani Tawase is a cracker and um, seven points to five. Misconversion though, that's another two points. The Wallabies are left out there. For those of you kind of keeping up at home, that's five points the Wallabies have, uh, have missed from the boot. There will be more. Uh, 15 minutes though, France, they look to have kind of uh, hit back from the weeks of restart, but um, Callaway, who I think had a pretty good game, put in a nice covering tackle on Villiers, who was, you know, not that far away. They put him into touch. It was a well-worked... Was Callaway and somebody else? Was it no one else? Was it Gordon? Um, but yeah, good little bit of defense because otherwise that was going to be an immediate hit back. And then, weirdly from France, Marchand, two lineouts in a row, does a double pump. You know, free kicks. He gets free kicked twice. It is bizarre. I don't think I've ever seen it back to back. You see something new every game, I swear. But um, yeah, very, very surprising. And um, the Wallabies actually had a chance out on Vunivalu's wing. Vunivalu, despite having a disastrous game about a month or so ago against the box, I thought actually looked not bad in this game. Yeah. Didn't look out of place. Like in the Springbox game, he looked completely like a man who didn't know what he was doing, but no, he looked like an athlete. He looked like a rugby player in this game. So maybe there's another bit of a bright side for the Wallabies. Um, Fiku and Villiers, though, causing havoc for um, for the French. Ramos manages to kick penalties on 25 and 27 minutes, respectively. So it goes 10-5, 13-5. The scoreboard's starting to get away from the Wallabies. Although their scrum was good. That's one thing that's pleasing. And Tupo gets through, I think, 69 minutes really really pleasing i've been kind of questioning that guy's fitness and um the ability of the kind of replacement guys in nongo and the debutante scoop to um you know to stand up but i think they did all right when they came on so yeah the wallabies win a scrum penalty they hop for three and it goes wide so that's two penalties and a conversion the wallabies have missed in that first half like to go on out here at two cents um offices living room um, what else is going on? Uh, Ramos doesn't miss a penalty in return on 36 minutes, so it's 16-5, and the crowd's just genuinely going bonkers. The game is, um, 
The game is really getting away from the Wallabies. And uh, 38 minutes, Villiers, uh, he's got a bit of loose ball. There is O-line when he gets smashed into by Callaway. Although that they find the uh, the reason for the causing of the loose ball was a slightly high shot from Callaway on Villiers. So that's a penalty for the French. Australia have a not straight line out before halftime. Um, they win a penalty from that scrum. They opt for touch this time. They maul it um, and then eventually get it to Callaway who knocks it on. That is how it goes in at halftime. So Australia in the game, but certainly missed a few kicks. They've had more run meters, 284 to 156. 55% uh, possession, 64% territory, five clean breaks to one, but none from none goal kicks. And the French are four from four. And that is a big old difference on the scoreboard. If anything, Rob Valentini is out Aldreeting Aldrich. He's had more carries, more run meters. Yeah, it's been... Despite the fact that they're way behind on the scoreboard, it's not been that bad a half from Australia. But from France, you get the sense that any moment they are going to score because they're never like more than two phases away from scoring, really. Second half, Fokiri puts a high shot on Fiku and Ramos actually misses a penalty. A little bit uncharacteristic this game. Australia with some field position. Now when it's a there with a nice carry offload. Pitaya with a little dink through. France, weird decision-making to try and run it out of their own 22. And then Tupo just smashes Ramos. <laughs> Ramos won't be thanking his other teammates for giving him that ball. Um, Australia win a penalty at the breakdown. They go for touch. They go for a maul phases. Cross kick to Vunivalu in the air, who does amazingly well to take it above his head. But then um, they can't get the support players there. The ball ends up in touch. So, yeah, man, like... France, despite the fact that it was 41-17, still had a few moments of their own where the decision-making or the skills let them down. Like I said, missed penalty and then trying to run it out their own 22. Sometimes it pays off, but this one <laughs> did not. They didn't pay for it, though. Um, 51 minutes, though. Uh, Bear offside means Australia get another attacking line-out chance and then Wokey with a nice line-out steal. That guy is pretty bloody good in the air. And then the next minute, there is a penalty... Dupont taps it, Jalibert with a big carry, line break, and then um, Vunivalu, his kind of worst moment of the game, I guess, he uh, he gets yellow carded for not releasing after a tackle on Villiers as France are trying to go fast. So that's his, yeah, uh, unfortunate moment of the game, sadly for him. Otherwise, I thought he was all right. From the resulting penalty, France kick it 19-5. Um, and then France are just too good with the extra man, man. Like, you can't give these guys... You can't give France an extra man. Villiers uh, has a cross kick kick to him in their own half. Callaway does well um, to field a subsequent Villiers kick through. But then um, when France get possession back, Aldrit, big carry. Dante, big carry. Beats defenders. Dupont with a cross kick to Pino and 26-5. That's what I mean about France not being that many phases away from any... <laughs> A try at any time, especially with an extra man. However, they did concede a try during the yellow card too. No one to Wase won a high ball, uh, kicked into the French half. McCray went through pretty much almost untouched a phase or two later. So um, yeah, 26-12, a try during the yellow card is a pleasing one for Australia. And maybe a little bit concerningly for France as two of the tries they conceded were from high balls. So other teams will certainly be taking note of that. Um, Ramos, though, didn't really get much credit for it in my commentary team. They didn't even mention it. Kicked a really casual 50-22 on 63 minutes, which directly led to the uh, the Villiers try on 64 minutes because the line-out move gets it wide to a big carry. Jonathan Dante, he manages to get the ball over the advantage line. Next minute, Jalibert, next phase. Jalibert dinks it through for Villiers, and it's a crack and finish from him uncharacteristic misconversion but 31 12 and then i think from that point on the final kind of 10 minutes france just have a bit of fun they are really just chucking the ball around they know they got the game one um and it pays off when Peno gets one from turnover ball two passes wide Peno with a chip and regather the aussie defense for that one is really soft and um yeah 38 12 is looking pretty horrendous they do get a consolation through vunivalu like i mentioned it's in the air uh, Jean Minet just couldn't get in the right position under it. And um, Vunivalu, if there's one attribute he does bring to this game, which is uh, hard to match, it's his ability in the air. So they get that one 38-17. But the French get the final say with a penalty to make it 41-17. So a finish is looking pretty horrendous. 
I do think if the Aussies goal kicking is a bit better, the scoreline doesn't look too bad. They finished at 20% with the boot, whereas the French, with all those penalties, five of them kept the scoreboard ticking over and uh, just took the game away from the Wallabies. Tries only finishes 4-3, to three, so on that front, not that different, man. Run meters, though, the French had a field day in the second half. Finishes 5 5 sorry, 544 to 476. Remember, France were behind in run meters at halftime. Possession evens up a bit, 47-53. Territory, the Wallabies have more, but clean breaks finishes 10 to 9. Remember, it was 5-1 to the Aussies in the first half. This gives you an indication of how free-flowing the French game got in the second half. Tackling percentage also France 88, which is pretty tidy. Australia 80, which is not gonna win you test matches away to France at the start of the France. Um, line out France 15 from 17. Uh, the Aussies 17 from 20, so both sides would like to probably be one or two better there. And uh, interestingly, if you're looking, again, for kind of chinks in the French armour, their scrum was put under a lot of pressure in that first half. They conceded a couple of penalties. And even when the Aussie replacement props came on, the French scrum wasn't just winning penalties against them like the All Blacks did a few weeks ago in Dunedin. Uh, individuals, Tupo played 69 minutes, like I mentioned, which is pleasing. Vunivalu had 97 meters, three clean breaks, three defenders beaten, and a try. Not bad, looked dangerous on the wing, albeit a dumb kind of yellow card when his team was under the pump. McCrike gets a try, makes 12 tackle attempts, makes 10 of them. It's a long way, winded way of putting that. Uh, Jolly Bear, 100 meters, one clean break, three defenders beaten, a try assist. In the absence of Intermark, he's looking pretty offensively minded, isn't he? Kors makes 18 from 21 tackles. Peno, four clean breaks, six defenders beaten. I didn't even get to Villiers' numbers. Uh, yes, dangerous, dangerous times. The French are going to be hard to beat at that stadium when they play the All Blacks in a couple of weeks. Australia, I don't think it's all doom and gloom despite the scoreline but certainly more areas to improve. They'll not be happy with all the tries they conceded. They'll not be happy with the goal kicking, but um, yes, a couple of weeks off now until we get to the World Cup proper. Should be a pretty fascinating one. We still wait to see which kind of squads are named from the ones that are still to come. The Irish squad, as I said here, I don't think has been named just yet, but it shouldn't be too far away. Uh, we've got more depth chart videos to come out if you want to check out the teams which have been done so far. Uh, there's the Aussie one, there's the All Blacks one, South African one, and the French one will be coming. But um, yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts, and um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. Later.